My name is Michael Sweeney. I'm the Director of Veteran Services for the Town of Swampscott and Lynn. I want to welcome you here for Swampscott's Memorial Day ceremony. I think it makes sense to start with the proclamation from Governor Charles Baker, Charlie Baker. Whereas while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, People in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor the, those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country. Renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all the men and women who have fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. Whereas throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifice serve as a reminder of the cost of freedom. Now I, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do by hereby proclaim May 30th, 20, 2022, to be Memorial Day, and urge all citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its, in its observance. And here in Swampscott, as in other places all over the country, in gatherings large and small, people are doing just that. So thank you for being here. I'd like to call forward Reverend Mark Templeton, Swampscott Fire Department Ch Chaplain, to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose grace your people gain courage through looking into the heroes of faith, we lift our hearts in gratitude to you for all who have lived valiantly and died bravely, that there might be truth, liberty, and righteousness in our land. Help us to prize highly and to guard carefully the gifts which those who have died in service to our country their loyalty, their devotion, have bestowed upon us. Grant us joy of a living and a vigorous faith, that we may be as true as they were true, loyal as they were loyal, and serve you and our country selflessly all the days of our life. Amen. And now I ask our Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts of Ocean Bay and our commanders and representatives of the four veteran organizations in Swampscott to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Members of the VFW Post 1240, American Legion Post 57, DAV Chapter 64, Marine Corps League Captain Jennifer Harris, Detachment 871. Thank you. Thank you so much.
and now he has remained here. We're, we're very lucky to have with us here today to sing the national anthem, the young woman, Scout Myers. She goes to Swan Scott Middle School. She's just a heck of a singer. Anyone who was up at the uh, remembrance yesterday for Captain Jennifer Harris heard her sing, and I think a twofer isn't bad, so please join us with in, in welcoming she picks up my paper. Thank you very much. Full service here, but I think you'll be struck by how by her voice. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Scout Myers with the National Anthem. That was my fault. It's not often I have to actually bring the microphone down for anyone else. Yeah. One more time for Scout, please. I'd like to call forward Town Administrator Sean Fitzgerald for remarks. Thank you, Michael. I want to thank all of uh, the parents that uh, brought your young citizens here today. And I want to thank um, all of our young scouts and Boy Scouts. There's nothing more important that you could possibly be doing today than to be right here. This is the most important thing that we could do to recognize the ultimate sacrifice that Swampscott citizens paid for such a beautiful country, for the values that we all believe in. It's not perfect, but it is the best hope that we have on Earth. This is our democracy, and it doesn't come free. The people that have raised children, that have believed in the values of freedom and equality and fairness and justice, all of those values live today in this place, this sacred place, because it's fundamental to the American dream. And we have a debt to everyone that has poured their life into this American experience to carry that torch, to believe in this dream, and to be here on days like today, when the sun's out, and you can smell hot dogs and hamburgers, and you know that the beach is calling, or there's a place far away that says we can relax and spend time with our loved ones, but not to be here to pay your respects, to renew your commitment to the values that they gave their lives for, lessens our resolve to face 
all of the responsibilities that we have for today and tomorrow. I am certainly heart-wrenched to think 350 of our Commonwealth sons and daughters whose names are on placards at Swanscott Town Hall uh, will never have a chance to spend another day with loved ones. I'm heart-wrenched to think of their families that continue to pay the price for our freedoms. But Swampscott is a, a wonderful town, a beautiful community that never fails to hold that torch, never fails to remember our sacred responsibilities. And frankly, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with the commitment of our veterans and our veterans agent, Mike Sweeney, to ensure that we don't forget two years ago when we were in the middle of the pandemic, when we didn't have a Memorial Day event for the public, we needed to do something. It was Michael and his wife, Sarah, that made sure that we could commemorate uh, those that paid the ultimate sacrifice. And Michael, I want to thank you on behalf of the town of Swampscott. And Sarah, I want to thank you. Uh, this is a community that will continue to hold the torch. We will continue to follow the values of this great American society. And, and we will never forget those that paid the ultimate price for our freedoms. Thank you all for being here. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope you will uh, reflect and spend some time talking about some of the sacrifices that ensure that we can uh, continue to believe in this wonderful society that we love. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I'd just like to acknowledge some of the people that are here today. Uh, one I think we should start with all the time. These are, uh, the Swamp Scott Fire Department is here today. Thank you very much. And the Swamp Scott Police Department. I think I've mentioned in different settings, uh, events like this are critically important. They're, they're, they're critical to the fabric of the community. But I think, as we all know, that's the beginning of our commitment, not the extent of it. And uh, one thing I, I want to just uh, say thank you to, to the Swamp Scott Police Department. Their mental health task force that I've been honored just to be a member of has really done good work uh, with veterans and uh, their family members in crisis. So I want to say thank you. And the same thing with the fire department. I think everyone should hear this, that in, in my experience, when they've dealt with veterans that are in crisis, they've dealt with them with a compassion that, that's really uh, something to see. So I want to personally say thank you to all of you. Thank you. <laughs> also, yesterday, my kid got lightheaded at the, uh, at, uh, the Jennifer Harris uh, ceremony. And, uh, the fire department took good care of him, so thank you very much. Um, his father failed him, telling him not to bend his knees. So everyone here should bend their knees. You can stand still. And uh, also, we have water. It's a little warm today, so please keep that in mind. Um, what I'd like to do now is uh, mention a couple more people that are here today, and then uh, before we get to the rest of our speaking program, from the select board, Neil Duffy, Peter Spelios. Thank you, thank you please. Uh, Peter Spelios. Mary Ellen Fletcher, from the Clerk of Courts. He's speaking. I'm getting it. I could have missed it, so I appreciate it. So, uh, and uh, Tom Driscoll, from our, who's our Clerk of Courts. Tom, thank you for being here. And uh, Sean Reed is here from Senator Crichton's office. Thank you, Sean, for being here. So I'd like to call forward now from the select board a good friend of uh, veterans in the community, David Grisham. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for inviting me today to join you during this Memorial Day Remembrance. I spent time this weekend walking through the Field of Heroes on Town Hall lawn, honoring Massachusetts fallen since 9-11. So it's fitting and right that we honor them all 
recognizing that our liberties as Americans come at a price. Today, across the country, we gather at cemeteries, monuments, and parks, march in parades in cities big and small to honor the loyalty and the bravery of our fallen in this noble calling, military service. The history of our nation and those who serve can be summed up in a short and simple yet fitting phrase. They are ordinary people who by virtue of their service and sacrifice are extraordinary. On Memorial Day, a tradition dictates that the stars and stripes are raised briskly against the wind to the top of the staff and then solemnly lowered to the position of half staff where it remains only until noon. It is then raised to full staff for the remainder of the day. The half staff position remembers the more than one million women and men who gave their lives in service of their nation. At noon, their memory is raised by the living who resolve not to let their sacrifice be in vain, but to rise up in their stead and continue the fight for liberty. So many mothers and wives, husbands and fathers, extended family and friends do their duty every day to ensure their loved one is remembered. They carry on each day with pictures on mantles and mementos of a life not fully lived. They carry on understanding that their soldier chose this life of service, and thus they understood the potential of their death as a sacrifice for the sake of freedom. These men and women left behind carry on their soldier's message, raising up their memory like an unfurled flag. On their soldier's message, uh, Today, we honor the families of those lost, for you bear a burden that only you can comprehend. We are grateful for the support you gave your soldier so they could carry out the mission of protecting the rest of us. It is our responsibility as American citizens to remember the nation's brave fallen men and women, whether they died on foreign lands in the heat of battle or after a lifetime in uniform. Never forget the men and women who know all too much the cost of our freedom for their service to this country is the greatest gift of, all, gift of all. Again, thank you for inviting me to be part of this ceremony. God bless those deployed in harm's way, providing us the opportunity to enjoy this beautiful day. God bless our great nation through these very challenging times, and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. From Freedom Isn't Free, from Swarm Scott Scouts, Troop 53. Freedom Is Not Free by Kelly Strong. I watched the flag pass by one day. It fluttered in the breeze. A young Marine saluted it, and then he stood at ease. I looked at him in uniform, so young, so tall, so proud. With hair cut square and eyes alert, he'd stand out in any crowd. I thought how many men like him had fallen through the years. How many died on foreign soil? How many mothers' tears? How many pilots' planes shut down? How many died at sea? How many foxholes were soldiers' graves? No, freedom is not free. I heard the sound of taps one night when everything was still. I listened to the bugler play and felt a sudden chill. I wondered just how many times that taps had meant amen when a flag had draped a coffin of a brother or a friend. I thought of all the children, of the mothers and the wives, of fathers, sons, and husbands with interrupted lives. I thought about a graveyard at the bottom of the sea, of unmarked graves in Arlington. No freedom is not free. Ladies and gentlemen, the service song medley.
United States Army. The Coast Guard. One more time for all the services. I, I joke sometimes that sometimes we play that just so the Marine Corps knows our other songs. But thank you very much. I think it's a, it's a great night, especially for our young uh, boys and girls that are here today. Please, as, uh, as you can see, the pride that people get when they when they see that hear that song. For those of you who are in the military, you're supposed to sing, so I shouldn't have been the only one up here alone. My voice notwithstanding. You know, um, touching on what uh, David mentioned earlier in his remarks, in front of Town Hall, you'll see the field of heroes over there. Um, those are the, the men and the women from Massachusetts who have fallen since 9-11. There are names that we all know. As you walk by, you might see, as a, I was honored to be there Friday night with Jackie Raymond as we laid a wreath. But what strikes you as you walk through, you see the names like Raymond, Harris, Moores. But then you'll stand next to somebody, and I'm uh, uh, standing next to uh, Mike Salsgiver from the fire department. He and I know four of the same guys that are up there. And when you look at those names, and I'm going to, again, touch a little bit. I'm going to do a little brag on my wife. 
she's the one who makes those up. And if you look at the names that are on there and the words, those aren't just cut and pasted from obituaries. The families themselves write those. And that's why you don't see the pictures. They're not straight up DOD pictures. Sometimes the families provide pictures they want because they think it says more about the, 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 soul, the, the, the man or woman. Please take the time to go out there. It'll be there till we'll, we'll be down tomorrow. Please, if you, get, if you haven't had a chance, please go by. Please recommend people go by. I think it says a lot, and I think the way uh, the town came together, the, the, the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts, the Girl Scouts of Ocean Bay came out there with the Fire Department, Police Department, to put that all together, and, I, and the Veterans Organization. So one of those things I really think says a lot about the community. And one of the things we do during the year is a... Uh, it's called Hero Meals. We give it's a thank you to veterans on Thanksgiving. And you wouldn't have seen her because she was behind the scenes, but our guest speaker, Lieutenant Colonel Costa, was there, volunteering her time, making sure the people had knew that their service was appreciated around that holiday. Because even if people, again, it's a thank you. Sometimes it's not the money; it's just knowing that people care. And so I appreciate her being there. So I think you'll be impressed. I should start off, interest of full disclosure, Lieutenant Colonel Costa was my battalion commander. And she was a strong leader. And she is a strong leader. So strong, she led us in PT one time. And I, uh, I hope she'll be generous and not tell you how I did. But beyond her military skills, she's an Iraq veteran. She's a mother. And what I know is how much she tries to take care of soldiers. And that is why we asked her to be with us here today. That's what makes her, that's what really, I think, makes, makes her stand out. If there's something going on with the soldier, she doesn't just say, well, that's NCO business, we'll take care of it. And those of you in the military know that sometimes that's how it goes. NCO feels on his own taking care of a soldier and they can't take, get, get some good help for them. That's not Lieutenant Colonel Costa. We're honored to have her here today. Again, from the Massachusetts Army National Guard, Iraq veteran, Lieutenant Colonel Tanya Costa. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for the warm welcome, and I say what an honor it is for me to stand here today to honor the fallen. My name is Tanya Costa. I am Lieutenant Colonel of the Massachusetts Army National Guard. At this time, I'd like to recognize Senator Crichton's office. Thank you. Swamp Squad Town Administrator Sean Fitzgerald, members of the Swamp Squad Select Board, Brigadier General Gail Bennett, Swamp Squad Chief of Police, Chief Caseta. Swamp Squad Chief, Fire Chief, Chief Archer, and Gold Star Mom, Jacqueline Raymond, here today to honor her son, Army Specialist Jared Raymond. Thank you. Gold Star Dad, Raymond Harris, here today to honor his daughter, Marine Captain Jennifer Harris. Military Friends Foundation, Sarah Sweeney, Director of Veterans Services, Michael Sweeney, who is also a Sergeant First Class in the Massachusetts Army National Guard, always answering the call for those in need. A big welcome and thank you to all veterans. Thank you. For more than 250 years, our military has provided a defense fire against our enemies. In that time, our world has changed and our armed forces have changed. But the valor, dignity, and courage of the men and women in uniform remain the same. The fighting spirit of the American soldier punctuates the history of our nation. And the cost for freedom has been tremendous. Today I'm going to share a few stories of some soldiers that have lost their lives in service for their country. During World War II, when the nurses stayed to tend to the wounded, they too could be captured, imprisoned, starved, tortured, or killed. But they never faulted. The nurses were warriors, and they were heroes. They served to protect the wounded. In Somalia, an army helicopter crashed in the middle of a maze of a wooden shack. A growing number of enemy troops were closing in. 
And on that crash site were four critically injured soldiers that were trapped in the wreckage. Master Sergeant Gary Gordon and Sergeant First Class Randy Shookhart volunteered to get their fallen comrades. Subjected to intense fire from automatic weapons, they fought their way to the crash site. They stayed and fought until their ammunition was exhausted. Sadly, Sergeant Gordon and Sergeant Shookhart were killed in action. Here we have honored those that sacrifice. Lastly, I'll share a story about Sergeant Steve Morin and Airman First Class Elizabeth Jacobson. They were stationed at Camp Fuker, Iraq. Sergeant Morin and Airman Jacobson were called to provide a routine convoy security to move equipment and personnel. The two were killed when their Humvee was hit by a roadside bomb. Sergeant Morin had less than two months to serve on his tour, and Airman Jacobson, well, she was only 21 years old. The stories I tell of these courageous men and women, each so different in heritage and background, share the common bond of the armed forces. That's patriot, duty, and heroism. They are soldiers who pay the ultimate price. The impact of this ultimate sacrifice ripples through our community. Service members' deaths touch more than just the lives of their loved ones and friends. When their stories are shared, these men and women, like Specialist Jared Raymond and Captain Jennifer Harris, they become part of a collective identity of our hometown in Swampscott. And a strong community like Swampscott ensures that this family and their friends are connected with agencies, like the veteran service that Michael Sweeney offers, the fire department that I just heard, the police department that comes in, as well as Military Friends Foundation, well, they offer that compassionate care. I am deeply honored to have served my country in Panama, in Iraq for 24 months, at the Washington Capitol riot in D.C., at the Boston bombing, at every natural catastrophe that has happened in Massachusetts for over 30 years, in an effort to bring assistance to disaster relief, peace, and freedom. I give full remembrance and thank God that the men and women like those I mentioned exist. And as I am honored to be standing before you and that you have allowed me to share these stories with you, I'd like to introduce a special person, Robbie Krakowski, whom I have known since he was in first grade. He would like to tell all the members in Swamp Scott what Memorial Day means to him. And I do believe that our generations need to start early. And I want to give him this opportunity to speak to the crowd. Here you go, Robbie. To me, Memorial Day is all about um, honoring the men and women who have fought for our country in all American wars and honoring them on this very day on, in um, Swamp Spot. And God bless everyone who fought in the war. May you always be remembered. Well, thank you, Robbie. I'm glad I followed after you. So as we observe Memorial Day, we must remember ourselves that freedom is not really free at all, that the price we pay to do what we want, when we want, and say what we want to whom we want comes at a cost, a cost that our forefathers and military members believe was worth paying because in the end, our world would be a better place. May God bless America and thank you. I'd like now to call forward Gail Bastrak with God Bless America.
I'd now like to ask Jacqueline Raymond, Gold Star mother of Army Specialist Jared Raymond, and Raymond Harris, Gold Star father of Marine Captain Jennifer Harris, to lay a wreath in honor of all of Swamp Scott's fallen from all wars. Please join me in a moment of silence. Saved a wretch like me. 
And now I'd like to call forward Reverend Mark Templeman, Swamp Scott Fire Department Chaplain, for our closing prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, we give you thanks and praise for the men and women who have served our country with dignity and honor. Bless their service, bless their sacrifice, and give us open minds and open hearts that in our time and in our place where we live, we might bring the values of justice, liberty, peace for all with compassion, with love, and with strength. Send us forth in this place in peace with your blessing this day in all our days. Amen. Thank you. This concludes our program. I want to say thank you to everybody who participated and everyone who's here today. I know it's warm. And I, I appreciate it. This, this, the turnout is always unbelievable. Um, just something really to behold. And I think it says, as I always say, it says an awful lot about Swamp Scott, the way everyone comes together. Uh, in that regard, uh, the, the, the men and women who were up here earlier, the commanders of the, the members of the, the four posts in the community that are down uh, formerly known as the VFW Post, uh, the Veterans Crossing, I think it's called. Uh, they'll be hosting a collation after this event. Please go down, say hello, let them show you what they've been doing. They've really been working hard. And I think when we talk about people putting their nose to the grindstone, people who organize and run veterans organizations know that anyone, anyone who's ever been involved or run knows that, the, the, that they wouldn't be doing it if it weren't a labor of love. They're working hard, and I think they're trying to make a difference down there. So please go down this afternoon and... Uh, this morning go down there and say hello uh, with that i want to um, say thank you and uh, we'll see you again 11 11 11 we'll be at uh, on monument ave for veterans day and we'll have other things going on in between we'll make sure everyone gets word on that but thank you again for being here and good day